Hi everyone! Welcome to Long Beach Public Library's Winter Extravaganza! This year, winter starts on December 21st and we wanted to celebrate the wonderful season with some songs, dancing, rhymes, and stories. I have a wonderful group of people ready to celebrate with you. So, my first introduction is Mr. Sheridan, and I need you all to stand up so we can do the winter hokey pokey. Are you ready? Oh, hi. It's freezing, isn't it? I think I'm either at the North Pole or the South Pole or the walk-in fridge at the Long Beach Public Library. I'm not sure where I am. All I know is that it's cold. I've got my hat, I've got my mittens, I've got my jacket, I've got my scarf, I've got my boots on, and I'm still freezing. Oh, do you have any ideas for what I could do to warm up? Huh. Oh, you know what? I know. How about we do the winter pokey? Have you ever done it before? Oh, no problem. I'll teach you. Okay, so here we go. Stand up. And what we're going to do is we're going to move our bodies around and we're going to get nice and warm because it is freezing. Here we go. Ready? On three, we're going to do our boots. And then we're going to do our mittens. And then we're going to do our hat. And last but not least, we'll do our scarf. Ready? So just imagine that you've got all these things going on. You're ready for winter weather. And here we go. On one, two, three, you put your boot in you take your boot out you put your boot in and you shake it all about you do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around that's what it's all about next up is our mittens you put your mittens in you take your mittens out you put your mittens in and you shake them all about you do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around that's what it's all about next up is our hat you put your hat in you take your hat out you put your hat in and you shake it all about you do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around that's what it's all about you ready for the scarf here we go the last one you put your scarf in you take your scarf out you put your scarf in and you shake it all about you do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around that's what it's all about. Very nice. Okay, after all that exercise, I'm pretty warm. How do you feel? I thought so. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care. Woo, that was a great warm up for our program. Are you guys ready for a story? I am. So let's get our listening ears ready for Miss Pam as she tells us a story about a little old lady who swallowed some snow. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Pam and I'm one of the children's librarians here at the Billie Jean King Main Library. I wanted to share a really fun story with you today. It's called, There Was a Cold Lady Who Swallowed Some Snow by Lucio Calandro and is illustrated by Jared Lee. Now I'm just going to show you one of the pictures from inside here because I'm actually going to tell you the story using the words that she wrote. So here we go. There was a cold lady who swallowed some snow. There's the snow. I don't know why she swallows some snow. Perhaps you know. There was a cold lady who swallowed a pipe. She wasn't the type to gulp down a pipe. She swallowed the pipe to warm her ten toes that tickled and tingled from layers of snow. I don't know why she swallowed some snow. Perhaps you know. There was a cold lady who swallowed some coal. What was her goal when she swallowed the coal? She swallowed the coal to keep her pipes glow. She swallowed the pipe to warm her ten toes that tickled and tingled from layers of snow. I don't know why she swallowed some snow. Perhaps you know. There was a cold lady who swallowed a hat. Imagine that. 
a black brimmed hat. She swallowed the hat before she froze. She swallowed the coal to keep her pipes glow. She swallowed the pipe to warm her ten toes that tickled and tingled from layers of snow. I don't know why she swallowed some snow. Perhaps you know. There was a cold lady who swallowed a stick, a long brown branch. What a pick! She swallowed the stick to push down the snow. She swallowed the hat before she froze. She swallowed the coal to keep her pipes glow. She swallowed the pipe to warm her ten toes that tickled and tingled from layers of snow. I don't know why she swallowed some snow. Perhaps you know. There was a cold lady who swallowed a scarf, a long striped scarf. She tried not to barf. She swallowed the scarf because it was so cold. She swallowed the stick to push down the snow. She swallowed the hat before she froze. She swallowed the coal to keep her pipes glow. She swallowed the pipe to warm her ten toes that tickled and tingled from layers of snow. I don't know why she swallowed some snow. Perhaps you know. Now this cold lady had quite enough. So she thought and she thought and came up with a plan. She hiccuped twice. Hick, hick, and out came the scarf, the stick, the hat, the coal, the pipe, and finally that snow. And what did it all make? Well, you probably guessed. A snowman. And that is the story of There Was a Cold Lady Who Swallowed Some Snow. Well, that was a great story told by Miss Pam. I have a question. Have you ever wondered how some animals prepare for the winter? Well, Miss Julian has a great winter song that can tell us all about that. Let's take a look. Hello everyone. Did you know that winter is coming and it's time to get ready? Let's sing a song together about how some of our friends get ready for the winter. You might not know it right off, but you'll catch on as we sing together. Big Brown Bear has gone to sleep, gone to sleep, gone to sleep. Big Brown Bear has gone to sleep. Now that winter's coming. Little squirrel gathers nuts, gathers nuts, gathers nuts. Little squirrel gathers nuts. Now that winter's coming. <laughs> Little rabbit changes coats, changes coats, changes coats. Little rabbit changes coats, now that winter's coming. Little duck goes flying south, flying south, flying south. Little duck goes flying south now that winter's coming. Little children bundle up, bundle up, bundle up. Little children bundle up now that winter's coming. Good job, everyone. Stay snug and warm and happy winter. Bye. Hey, welcome back. 
What did you like the most about that song? I really liked how the rabbit changes fur in the winter. Okay, so now we're moving on to our next awesome person, and I'm going to be introducing Mr. Carl, and he's going to tell us a wonderful rhyme about snowmen. Let's take a look. Hey guys, today we're going to be learning all about snowmen. We're going to be learning what they like and what they dislike. We're going to use clues about snowmen to help us figure that out. We know that snowmen like cold weather, winter, and snow. And we know they probably dislike things that are hot and will make them melt. And that's about it. So we're going to use those clues to figure out what, we, what snowmen would like and dislike, okay? Let's get started. Carrots. Yummy, yummy carrots. Do you think that snowmen would like carrots or dislike carrots? Let's turn it around and find out. Look at that smiley face. Yes, snowmen love carrots because that's what they use as their nose. Carrots are great with snowmen. Ooh, a hot bath. What do we know about snowmen? We know they don't like hot things. Do you think a snowman is going to want a hot bath? I know I would, but let's see about the snowman. Look at that sad face. Hot baths are not good for snowmen. Okay, what's next? Oh, the beach. I bet you you can see snowmen at the beach. I love the beach. What do we know about beaches? They're hot, the sun's always out. What do you think? Do you think snowmen like beaches? Let's find out. Oh no, snowmen don't like beaches probably because they'll probably melt on a beach, wouldn't they? Here's something. This is a snowball. Do you think snowmen like snowballs? They're cold and you make them in winter. I'm pretty sure, yep, snowmen love snowballs. And let's see, what else do we have? Mmm, yummy, yummy hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate in the winter. Do you think snowmen would like hot chocolate? Let's find out. No, snowmen don't like hot chocolate, probably because it's too hot for them and then they'll melt. So, hot chocolate is no for snowmen. But what about sledding? Do you think snowmen like to sled? Do you think they like to do that something they would do? Let's see, sledding involves winter, snow, and it's usually pretty cold. I'm gonna guess, yes, snowmen love sledding. Okay, how about ice cream? It's cold and delicious. I bet you snowmen love ice cream. And they do, look at that smiley face. All right, we're on our last thing. We're gonna use all our clues to figure this out. What about hot soup? Do you think that snowman would love a hot soup on a winter's day? Hmm, that's a tricky one because we usually eat soup when it's cold, but soup is too hot for snowmen. So that's a sad face. Great job, guys. Great way to use the clues that we knew about snowmen to figure out what they like and what they don't like. So let's see. We figured out that snowmen like carrots, dislike hot baths, they dislike beaches, but love snowballs. They can't really handle hot chocolate, but love to sled, and they love eating ice cream, but they can't handle hot soup. Good job, guys. Five little snowmen standing in a row, each with a hat and a big red bow. Out came the sun and he stayed all day, and one little snowman melted away. How many snowmen do we have now? That's right, we have four. Four little snowmen standing in a row, each with a hat and a big red bow. Out came the sun and he stayed all day. And one little snowman melted away. Where are we at now? Three, three little snowmen. 
Three little snowmen standing in a row, each with a hat and a big red bow. Out came the sun and he stayed all day, and one little snowman melted away. We're at two. Two little snowmen standing in a row, each in a hat and a big red bow. Out came the sun and he stayed all day, and one little snowman melted away. Okay guys, this is the last one. One little snowman standing all alone, he had a hat and a big red bow. Out came the sun and he stayed all day, and that little snowman melted away. Thank you guys for singing with me. I hope you enjoyed our song about snowmen. Bye-bye. Hi again. Thanks, Carl, for that great rhyme. Are you guys ready for another story? I am. So I have Miss Anna, and she's going to tell us a great winter story about some winter animals and a mitten. This is The Mitten, retold by Jim Aylesworth and illustrated by Barbara McClintock. Once upon a time, there was a happy little boy who loved to play. Yes, he did. In the spring, he loved to climb trees and peek in at baby birds. In the summer, he loved to chase the golden butterflies. In the autumn, he loved to play in piles of golden leaves. And in the winter, he loved to play in the white, white snow. And every winter, because she loved him, the little boy's grandmother would knit a great warm woolen hat that he could pull down over his little ears, a long warm woolen scarf that he could wrap two times around his little neck, and a pair of warm woolen mittens for his little hands. And on the cold, cold day of this story, the little boy dressed himself warmly in his hat and his scarf and his mittens, and he went outside to play. He played and he played and he played. How can we play in the snow? We can throw snowballs, make snow angels, sled down the hill, whoosh. Uh-oh, he left something behind. What is it? When at last he came inside, he discovered that one of his mittens was lost. Oh no, said the little boy. Don't worry, said the grandmother. We'll find it tomorrow. You've had enough of the cold for one day. And because she loved him, she made him a mug of steaming hot chocolate. Oh, in the meantime, someone else found the mitten. Who is that? A squirrel. Just while the little boy was sipping his hot chocolate, a squirrel came along and saw the lost mitten lying in the snow. Brrrr, said the squirrel. My toes are cold as ice. This mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. So the squirrel crawled into the little boy's mitten to warm his toes. The squirrel found the mitten quite warm and very comfortable. And soon he was so nice and toasty in there that he fell sound asleep. But just then along came a rabbit. Well, the rabbit likes the looks of that mitten. Brrrr, said the rabbit. Let me come in. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the rabbit. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Okay, said the squirrel, you can come in. And the rabbit crawled in. It was a bit tight in there for two. Nevertheless, with a little budging over, they were able to manage. 
and very soon they were nice and toasty warm and they fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a fox. Oh no. Brrrr, said the fox. Let me come in. No room, said the rabbit and squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the fox. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. <sighs> okay, said rabbit and squirrel. You can come in. And the fox squeezed in. It was really crowded in there now with three. Nevertheless, the mitten stretched out enough and soon they were nice and toasty warm. They all fit in that mitten. Oh no. Just when they had fallen sound asleep, along came a bear, a very big bear. Brrrr, said the bear. Let me come in. No room, said fox and rabbit and squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the bear. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. <sighs> okay, said fox, rabbit, and squirrel. You can come in. Is the bear gonna fit in that mitten? No way. The bear squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed until at last he got himself in. Wow, that is a stretchy mitten. It was very cramped in there with the four of them all squished together like that. Still, they were nice and toasty warm, and soon they all fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a little mouse. Brrrr, said the little mouse in a teeny tiny voice. Let me come in. No room, said bear, fox, rabbit, and squirrel. Go away. Please begged the little mouse. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. We can't, said the bear. Too full, said the fox. No way, said the rabbit. Impossible, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, said the little mouse. I'm just a little mouse. Okay, you can come in. And they all held their breath <laughs> while the little mouse carefully squeezed into a teeny tiny spot. There he is squeezing in. And for a minute, all was well until suddenly the bear and the fox and the rabbit and the squirrel all had to take a great big deep breath of air. <gasps> and as they did, Oh no, the mitten burst apart and spilled them all out onto the snow. Couldn't fit that little mouse inside. What a shame, said bear and fox and rabbit and squirrel. Oh, it is, said the little mouse, a terrible, terrible shame. Then one by one, the mouse, the bear, the fox, the rabbit, and the squirrel all went off to find another place to warm their toes. In the morning, the little boy and his grandmother went out looking for the lost mitten. Soon they came upon the bits and pieces of yarn lying in the snow. What could have happened? asked the little boy. I have no idea, said the grandmother. But don't worry, 
I can knit another. And because she loved him, that's exactly what she did. The end. That was a really great story. Do you guys remember how many animals fit into the mitten? That's right, five. That's a lot of animals. Okay, everyone, now we're down to our last person, and I'm gonna need you all to stand up and to get your dancing feet ready, because I have Miss Shayna ready with some winter folk songs to get you moving and grooving. So, are your dancing feet ready? Are you all standing? Okay, take it away, Miss Shayna. Hi friends, we're going to do some winter songs. The first one is called the Mitten Song, so get your hands ready. Here we go. Thumbs in the thumb holes, fingers all together. This is the song we sing in mitten weather. Whether it's cold, it doesn't really matter. If mittens are made of wool or finest leather. Thumbs in the thumb hole, fingers all together. This is the song we sing in mitten weather. Whether it's cold, it doesn't really matter. If mittens are made of wool or finest leather. This song is called The North Wind Doth Blow. The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. And what will the robin do then? Poor thing, he'll sit in a barn to keep himself warm and hide his head The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. And what will the dormouse do then? Poor thing, she'll curl in a ball in a nest oh so small, and wait for the coming of spring. The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. our winter extravaganza here at the Long Beach Public Library. If you liked any of the books that were read or even want to know about how animals prepare for the winter or even want to just do some winter crafts, check out our online catalog where you can order books and pick them up at any of our curbside locations. So it's time for me to say farewell and we miss you all here at the Long Beach Public Library. Stay safe, stay warm, and I'll see you around. Bye.